In a world of fake news, we bring you up to the minute factual inaccuracy and a heavy dose of moral truth. With your hosts, Kyle Mann and Ethan Nicole. This is the Babylon B. Fake news you can trust. Hello, everybody. I'm Kyle Mann, editor in chief of the Babylon B, and this is my buddy. I'm Ethan Nicole, eat Kyle's buddy, <laughs> <laughs> who's also the creative director of the Babylon Bee. <laughs> and we drove to Hollywood today, and we saw a guy lying in the gutter. Oh, hey guys! <laughs> and we just grabbed him. How's it we going? We cleaned him up. Got him a little bit. One of Kyle's hoodies. Made him presentable. Got him some glasses. I'd love to be costume store. I'd love to be your buddy if that's if that's yeah, an option. You could be my buddy too. Okay, okay. that'd be great. Yeah, he's oh. my best buddy, but you can. <laughs> You can earn your way up to best, best buddy. Second best is fine. Second That's best okay. Buddy. Second yeah, place. Yeah. You just have to murder all of his previous buddies to get to the top. <laughs> I can there can it. be only one. Yeah. I, I really. can do it. Yeah, I'm not afraid. <laughs> okay. That's a movie idea for you. That's a free movie okay. idea. <laughs> right. uh, so this is I, Wes Solula. Oh, that's right. My yeah. buddy. I'm your buddy. Yeah. I'm your A number one buddy. <laughs> so we go way back. We that's wrote right. some Veggie Tales together. We did. The, the, the Abomination. Yeah. I was there for like 15 minutes. And yeah, you were uh, there for the worst part of the whole. <laughs> yeah. It was the worst. I, I think that my biggest contribution to Veggie Tales was that they gave us a giant stack of post-it notes. Mm -hmm. And I spent hours writing fart along the edges you of did. all of the things. <laughs> so for long after I was gone, you guys were still using my fart post-it notes. Yeah, because yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so you wrote the death of Laura Carrot episode that was critically panned, I assume. Sure. Yeah, it was the role of the, <laughs> yeah. the nadir of VeggieTales. <laughs> yep. Yeah. A little dark for a kid's show. Pretty dark, but they learned a valuable lesson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not going to let the studios mess with my art. Yeah. So it's good. It was important. <laughs> Glad you have your integrity. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No work, but... No work. Integrity. But have, that's, <laughs> that's why you found me in the gutter. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it actually is dark, not because of the death of Laura Carrot, but the death of some actual people. Oh, that was an yeah, excellent transition. That, thank you. Untimely. Wow. Yeah. Uh, especially, I mean, I don't think anybody thought we were going to lose Carmen. Mm -mm. We've talked about Carmen many times in the show. We were obsessed with him. <laughs> and, I mean, we were literally talking to people that know Carmen. Just yesterday, we talked yesterday to a guy. Yesterday, we were talking to a guy that worked like, oh, on a stage show. He's like, I mm -hmm. talked to him for we an hour last week, somebody, and we're yeah. just... It's kind of awkward now because now we have all these interviews pre-recorded where we ask people about Carmen and we go on and on about Carmen. Yeah. Like those will... In our 10 questions, question number one, have you met Carmen? Yeah. We not... want to get the, we want to know about Carmen. And we're not going to retire that question. No. Because Are people we? could, no. no. Yeah, because we're still, still met him. I still want to get to where we have an awesome full Carmen do... episode that's like a the deep dive. Yeah. We may have to expedite it because we really yeah. want to get that going We got to get now. that out now. The Carmen special. We need it's a documentary coming. guy. Yeah. I'm here for you. He, West yeah. does documentaries. Okay, mm -hmm. Carmen documentary, I'm in. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm totally in. But yeah, Carmen died at 65. It sounded like complications from surgery, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a heart attack right after surgery in Vegas, and that's just terrible. So, yeah, we... Uh, the guy changed CCM forever. I mean, he kind of invented CCM in a lot of ways. Right. I mean, you had Keith Green and Larry Norman, and but he like he had this like theatrical flair about him. Yeah, and, he was a showman. Yeah, sure. yeah. We've looked at yeah. some of his videos on this. The greatest podcast. showman. I mean, mm -hmm. Forget Hugh he Jackman. He played to the largest audience ever. Yeah. Christian music, I think. Oh really? Yeah, it was like se seventy or eighty thousand people. Wow. It still holds the record. It's wow. incredible. Can I read? Uh, me, me and Wes crafted our Carmen article this morning. Yeah. Outside of our cigars. Please. It's, it's been good. edited a little bit, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> now I'm curious what you edited. Carmen passes away after lifelong addiction to Jesus. Now, the uh, the goal of this article is to work as many of his t song titles in as we could, so you might have edited some out. Yeah, so just so you guys know, Ethan had more song titles in here. Well, I had to edit it for accuracy, because you were talking about how he's like, got get in the ambulance and driven to the hospital, but that was, he was already at the Oh, well, that's he didn't die of an addiction to Jesus. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> what are you, Snopes? <laughs> I, we have to have accurate satire. Oh, my so. gosh. Famed okay. Christian pop legend and rapper Carmen Licciardello. I don't know how to say his name. No, that's correct. Just, Just Carmen. Carmen. Has it. passed away after a lifelong addiction to Jesus. Doctors said that the effects of the addiction were coming on strong. 
We need a sound effect whenever we hit a song oh, title. Oh, I'm here for you. Hang on. I, I've got some sound effects, guys. All right, hang Before on. his final moments. I think he's a shock jocker. When yeah, May, he he wanna, thinks we need to be more like a morning show. Yeah, uh, you guys are kind of low energy, mm-hmm. and I thought maybe <laughs> I could bring... He's low energy Kyle. He's been called that. Yeah, see? And, well, I'm low energy, too. But Yeah, and I thought I'd bring some fun, so... Uh, I've been called, what have I been called low energy Kyle? I see it. Perfect. Oh, that's excellent. Okay. <laughs> maybe more like just a bell ding. How about every time you... Uh, do yeah. a song title. I'll do okay. a little sound effect for it. If All right. I can. Okay. Okay. The the effects of the addiction were coming on strong. It's too long. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a, that's terrible. It just needs like a. <laughs> I don't know how to stop doing? it. <laughs> we should have planned this a little better. Okay. I can't make it stop, guys. <laughs> guys. Oh, here we go. <laughs> It ends okay. with a fart. This is the death of Carmen. We can't be funny. You can't do that. Yeah. You, okay. But you don't think he would appreciate some guys. Humor. I think he would love this. <laughs> if you find a hobo in the gutter, don't ask him to be on your podcast. <laughs> okay, okay. Hold on. Before okay. his final moments, when a family member said his last words were Satan, bite the dust. Okay. Doctors hooked Carmen up to an IV. This blood's for you. <laughs> you can't just hit it random. Oh, that wasn't the song title. <laughs> That's not a song title. <laughs> Doctors hooked Carmen to an IV. That's a song title. <laughs> <laughs> this blood's for you is so that counts for that one. A doctor said, "Man, are you for real?" There you go. This is good. This is one hard. nurse replied. Okay, this is the most disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> We're not being disrespectful. No, it's... we did some tests on this blood. This blood. <laughs> <laughs> I just like a belding. I was like, Ding. oh, that's all I want. I just... That's, not, that's, that's terrible. Are we going into a 7-Eleven? That is terrible. What is happening here? <laughs> Eventually, the addiction took over, and he succumbed to a righteous invasion of truth. Okay. At a Pearly Gates press conference, late Christian musician Keith Green announced, we're excited to welcome home the champion. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done like a something more epic at the end there, but yeah. Um, I just okay, needed like, like a little... Or something. Something really no, like, epic. Da, 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 da. All right, let me look for doot doo ba doo No, it's, we're good. We're done. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. over. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, when we really record this podcast, that'll be... Yeah, that was uh, a good dress rehearsal. Great, for sure. <laughs> wow. In addition... <laughs> okay, okay, Wes. <laughs> what? Okay, no, that was good. Okay. Okay. In addition... <laughs> Rush Limbaugh passed away. <laughs> oh, I got yes. some sound no, effects. No, no, no. We okay. have no funny article and sound effects for Rush Limbaugh. All we have is a lot of really, really, really horrible tweets. Yes. <laughs> Twitter is just... Because, yeah, I saw a trending. On, yeah. Rush Limbaugh has died rotten hell. I think it was oh. one of the trending things. Yeah. That's a hashtag. Because people are really original. Yeah, that's nice. Party of love, unity, mm-hmm. yes. progress. Tolerance. Tolerance. Mm-hmm. Not tolerance healing anymore. The nation. Tolerance is out. So. Coming together, healing the nation. But unity. They've been talking about unity. I was always fascinated by the uh, the, the extreme hate of Rush. Mm. I grew up, my dad lived in a van when I was a kid, and he just listened to Rush nonstop. Sure. So that's my main memory of Rush. It's just like, he's this voice going on in my dad's van, my homeless dad's van, which he must be self-hating because anybody who's homeless and is Republican... Right, 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 idiot. Yep, <laughs> a total idiot. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up in a very blue collar house that was very conservative, and we got mm. a lot of the like. But you guys are blue collar. You don't. Yeah. Why would you? Why are you just getting brainwashed by the rich? Right. Yeah. My so, uh, my Buick. I had a 1978 Buick in high school. The FM radio didn't work. Mm-hmm. The AM radio worked. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, all I could really listen to was talk radio and, you know, sports. Eh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rush Limbaugh, he was a nice, you know, voice or whatever. And I, so I got into listening to, for, to him for a few years there. I do think that with Rush, a lot of the people that hate him get, don't get him in the way they don't get us. Sure. Because mm-hmm. they think if you make jokes like this, you're making them from this place of like... You're absolutely right. Absolute and, hate yeah. and like, because sure. mm-hmm. you're this warrior trying to win it because that's how they are about their jokes and stuff. And so they can't see like the facetiousness. Hmm. He's like this uncle type figure. They just kind of. You know, there's a word for that. What's that? Avuncular. Avuncular. He's it very mean, avuncular. Yeah. It means He has the word uncle in there. Yeah. It means uncle-like. Oh, really? I didn't know we needed that word, but huh, today we need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Evuncular thinking, radio host has passed. Yeah. I was thinking we could have like uh, got stacks of paper t- just in honor of him, just to be like shuffling them shuffling constantly. Them. You know, because yeah. that was like a constant soundtrack to his show. Was yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stack. Of I remember <laughs> when he me- he's, he mentioned the Babylon Bee a couple of times yeah. on wow. his show, and he would like someone just gave me this um, article from this website, the Babylon Bee. You know, you and he would do it. Someone printed and off the internet. They would print for it me. off and they would give it to <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, printed by one article. Funny stuff, very funny stuff, and he'd throw it. You know, it's like whatever. So, <laughs> that's awesome. I was honored to be on his paper yeah, at that's... least one point in his life. That's very so. cool. I oh. grew up in Kansas City, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he got his start working for the Royals. Actually, wow. so he actually was. It's a baseball. Uh, it's a baseball yeah. team. You knew oh, okay. that. That was yeah. excellent. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's the one with the red strings on the ball. Uh, the stitching, the red stitching. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a baseball. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting story, okay. huh? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all we got. <laughs> yep, that's it. So rest in peace, Rush and Carmen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now let's move on to some stuff that's good. But now this week's edition of stuff that's good. All right, Kyle, I've seen you tweeting about this. Yeah. Um. <sighs> John Foreman came out with a new album, and that means that that's my stuff that's good this week. It's called Departures, and it's excellent. Hmm. I had to figure it out for a while. I was like, oh, that's the Switchfoot guy. It's the Switchfoot oh. guy. So basically, anything he writes for Switchfoot that has too much Jesus in it mm-hmm. gets moved to his solo stuff. Oh, mm. Interesting. Well, and stuff that's a little more folksy and doesn't fit. So it's hmm. very Bob Dylan-inspired, and I, to me, it's the perfect album for like 2020, 2021. Hmm. Very hopeful. Excellent stuff. Hmm. Departures. If you're going to listen to one song, listen to Thanks Be to God or um, Heaven in a Place Called Earth, I think is the other one. Okay. Yep. I'm in. All right. Oh, my stuff that's right. good is uh, a movie that I haven't seen yet, but it, <laughs> but Wes made it, and it's coming out. I wanted to do a spit take. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? <laughs> so Wes made a movie... What was your involvement in this movie? Like, did you fully like write it and everything, or how would you do? Uh, I partially wrote it. Partially I, wrote I, it. I, uh, it you wrote all the good parts. I wrote the funny stuff okay. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a movie called Church People. Okay. Uh, my involvement was a little bit weird. Uh, I've written a lot of stuff for Stephen Baldwin. I wrote mm-hmm. a movie long ago called Midnight Clear that was kind of actually why we moved out here because it, it did pretty well and Stephen was in it and. Uh, for some reason, he just kind of latched on to me like, hey, you're my guy. And so he'd work in projects and bring me in to do rewrites or we'd create stuff together or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he called me and said, hey, we got this movie. At the time, it was called Youth Group. And uh, he said it was uh, written by a guy named Thor Ramsey. And I was like, I know Thor. He's a friend of mine. When we moved to L.A., Thor came and helped us move in. Hmm. He's a Christian comedian. He had a show called oh, yeah, Bananas that, for a while. Uh, really funny guy. And so... Stephen brought me in to uh, basically, you know, Thor is a comedian and he wrote all of this funny stuff in this movie, but it kind of needed to be turned into a movie. Mm. And so Thor and I uh, sat together and for a long time we did rewrites on the movie and kind of tried to keep the funny, but Mm -hmm. turn it into an actual story and make some new funny stuff. And so Thor and I wrote it together. Uh, A guy named Bob Sands wrote a a, a draft that we kind of used some of that stuff a little bit and... uh, uh, yeah, so then I was a writer and a producer on the film. Okay. Yeah, it was really fun. Cool. So yeah. it's, and it's taken a while for it to finally come out. Oh, my it's gosh. Here now. Holy cow. Well, those guys, so Thor and the director, Christopher Shanshaw, they've been working on it uh, for years before we filmed it. I mean, for hmm. years and years and years. And then we, we got it. I kind of came in I, almost pre-production, and we did a rewrite. And so then we filmed it. This was... Uh, I'm not good with time, but it was when Donald Trump was one of 12 Republican candidates mm. for president is when we He's filmed like, it. Yeah, no way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so was that 12 years ago? I don't, I, I have no yeah. concept. No. So, uh, the it's, different time. Yeah. It was a different universe for sure, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Yeah. And we kind of, a worse universe. <laughs> no, <laughs> in some ways, in some ways. <laughs> Yeah, we really were like, oh, I don't know if this movie's ever coming out, man. I guess it's just yeah. not going to happen. And so maybe that's because a lot of Christian films feel like they're like behind by like ten years. So maybe that's, that's why, why it's developing. We, needed, hell. we were we were currently <laughs> culturally relevant, so we had to wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we actually write really edgy stuff, and then it just gets delayed ten, uh, 10 twenty yeah, years. That's so the that problem. By the time it comes, <laughs> yep. 
No, it's super fun though. It's got um, Joey Fatone in it, and it's got um, oh shoot, I'm totally blanking. The guy from Scrubs, Donald Faison. Donald Faison, who is so funny in the movie, he's really <laughs> really funny. Uh, Stephen Baldwin's in it, and he got his brother Billy Baldwin to be in it. It's the first time <laughs> they've ever been in a movie together. And <laughs> Billy Baldwin and his wife China Phillips, they're both in it, and they play like this like super o- open minded hippie couple. <laughs> and that's doing a really terrible job of raising their son. And they're, they're kind of like, well, we don't think of ourselves as parents, but we're all just friends living here together. You know, <laughs> it's like super, they're so funny. And they, they went all in on, on performing it. You yeah, know, it yeah. was really like, dang, they nailed Excellent. it. That was really funny. Do you get Kirk Cameron or Kevin Sorbo in there? Or? We only were allowed one Christian movie uh, superstar, okay. so like, Stephen Baldwin the budget. filled that mm, role, yeah. and we couldn't. You got 50 bucks. Well, they all are very, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. <laughs> you can't, it's kind of like, uh, you know, there's certain kinds of animals you can't cage together, like Siamese fighting fish. <laughs> exactly. so Christian celebrities. You can only have one. You can have one. You can't yeah. all tear each other apart yeah. with their yeah. teeth. For sure. So, yeah. Church People comes out March 13th? March 13th, yeah. Okay. It's not a Friday, is it? Uh, it? Oh, I think it is. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yikes. But it's also available Would you like to change your Saturday the 14th <laughs> and Sunday the 15th. We're so. not a superstitious people. <laughs> <laughs> Can we play the trailer without getting flagged on YouTube? I think so. Okay. I would love it if you did. Let's play the trailer. I told you if we broke attendance records, I'd get the church logo tattooed on my arm. Yeah, remember back when we first started? All we did was preach the gospel. Ooh, Superman works. I like Superman. Guy, what do you think? What happened to you? Me? Your dad is the one with the gimmicks. The power of the Holy Spirit propels us. I just went to church to get back to the gospel. Problem is you're trying to get your message across. Uh, The gospel? Right, right, right. And ain't nobody listening to that. A good Friday and Easter. I need something big. Amen? Bigger than the resurrection. Bigger than anything we've ever done. National headlines. Preach on the death and resurrection of Jesus. Play it. An actual crucifixion. Uh Uh-oh. By placing the nails through your palms in the right place, we hope to avoid major nerve damage. Operation Stop Skip is a go. That's awesome. You have to cancel this Good Friday stunt. Don't be so dramatic, honey. Ooh, I like the rusty ones. What are you gonna do? I told him he's insane. I've been praying for you about that toe fungus. This could be beneficial for all parties involved. We foster a yes environment here. To marry you and you could be my wife. I have an answer for you. Oh, what a great trailer. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, man, to part with the, the, the Baldwin. Oh, oh, um, yeah. Joey Fatone out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a character. All right, let's move on to some uh, weird news. This has been... Stuff that's good. This news is weird. California man's wallet, lost in Antarctica, returned after 53 years. He lost so, his wallet, it's back. He lost it in 1967 as a Navy meteorologist. Hmm. And forgot about it until last week. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he got it back. So, wow. That's he's, weird. And he's 91 now. <laughs> he's 91 now. Huh. He, so he would imagine if he had died and not gotten that wallet back. Wow. What a sad world. It's been this tragic. Movie. So this is amazing. It'd be the third tragedy of this week. Inspiring. Yeah. When we were talking about this before, I thought it was a guy from California. <laughs> yeah, <he> was, <laughs> you missed, was, the, the, word I missed the, the word wallet. I missed the word wallet. He thought a man was lost in an article for 53 <laughs> <For 50. laughs> years, and he escaped when he was 91. I was like, wow. He was going on about the story. And I'm, <laughs> he's going on about the story. This is a crazy story. And I'm going, huh, well, That's I mean, okay. it's, just a, it's a wallet. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I like this one. Rapper Len Martin. Starts Gorilla Glue challenge after thinking Tessica Brown's story about being unable to get Gorilla Glue out of her hair was a hoax. He immediately gets a red Solo cup stuck to his face. <laughs> so he thought, so then just for context, he tweeted this. 
He tweets, I thought that chick with the Gorilla Glue was making that story up. But no, it's real. I don't know why I tried it. Now they talk about cutting the tip off my lips in surgery. Y'all pray for me. And then the photo is excellent. If you're it's not on the un- video, get on the video feed and you look have at to this see photo. this picture. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he glued the red Solo cup to his actual, Just over his nose over and his eyes. Over his nose, yeah. On his face. It looks like a joke, but it's it's real. It, he did this. I like now, that when you guys still- first read this story, I thought he glued a gorilla to his face. I misunderstood oh. This, oh, that story, yeah. too. But glued a wallet. Good, he glued a wallet from Antarctica right, exactly. to his face. <laughs> yeah. He announced he's going to be releasing a solo album. Oh, yeah? hey oh, oh, yeah. oh, hang on. Yeah. I have the perfect yeah. sound no. effect. His new rapper name is going to be Cupface. <laughs> that wasn't as good of a joke. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a, a dog yo, yowl. In the house. <laughs> what is that? A dog yowl. Okay. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> This could be a good alternative to masks, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All patrons required to wear a mask or glue a solo cup to their face. Um, your turn, Wes. You get to oh, read is it? The, you get to read the next one. Oh, man. Can okay. You, I love reading. Just read each word in there. Reading in, in is order. fundamental. This yeah. is the mysterious... Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is a big story, guys. I don't know why it's not bigger. <laughs> mysterious trail of four-toed footprints discovered atop frosty car in England. And mm. boy, it is uh, fascinating. There's some weird little tiny footprints with four toes that walk across the back uh, window of this car. No, it's the windshield. Back wind is, is it the windshield in the back? Or the back or I can't or tell it, yeah, you can see the, it, uh, there's a window. It's a it's a British wiper. car, so it's backwards uh, whichever way it is. Yeah, yeah. flipped horizontally. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. My metric. I'm looking at this thinking somebody rubbed their. Side yes. of their hand, and then did the little finger toes and just ring. That's funny. what it looks like That's to me. That's exactly what it is. There's, it's and not they're a, too like round and perfect. Debunked. Debunked. <laughs> Snopes. <laughs> Let's get Snopes on the case here. <laughs> Debunked. I love all the speculating about what it could be. What? How could somebody be? It's so cold out. Why would they be walking on a car at this time of night? <laughs> <laughs> like you normally do yeah. in the warm weather. <laughs> like if it was a fire. Yeah. <laughs> If it was warm out, I might understand walking yeah. up a windshield. I see a lot of stuff on the internet that's like obviously fake, like, yeah. like a staged video. And then you go to the comments and there's like hundreds of people like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm just jaded, you know. Yeah, you are. Just a little world. You're a Hollywood stuff. insider, so you kind of uh, know the I see behind the scenes of how this tricks. stuff is done. Mm-hmm. Uh, musician, you know musician turns late uncle's skeleton into working guitar. Hmm. So, it, yeah, rib cage. <laughs> this Elvis. happened in the movie Coco. Did it? No, I don't know. I think what? what's what's important here is that this guy's in Florida, so it feels Florida like a man. Florida man story. It's very sure. on brand, and his yeah. name is Prince Midnight. <laughs> wow. Does the does it sound different? Is that his birth name? Does it tell uncle jokes? <laughs> <laughs> it's so a very avuncular guitar. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently, the bones have been used in a medical school in Greece for a while for, for decades. Educate. Yeah, for decades. So this is an old uncle. Hmm. Is there a word for old, old uncle? Stuff? Probably. <laughs> it's old avuncular. Yeah, old, avuncular. <laughs> old avuncular. Yeah. <laughs> so he decided they didn't need him. He's like, oh, I'll make him into a guitar or something. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does look pretty so cool. So he took like the pelvis, spine, and rib cage and made that the body of the guitar. But why not the skull? And then he affixed <laughs> the... And then Is he, he playing inside the of the ribs? Maybe the skull could be the head of the guitar. It yeah. should be. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the skull is the most metal thing. But, all right. Cool. Fail. Is it my turn? It's your turn. Uh, Ted Cruz is rocking a mullet now. Is this true? I yeah. see this photo all over the internet. It's true. It's a real photo. What? what does, does anybody know the story of why he's doing this? I, I don't know. We, we could ask him. You want to ask him? I, I, I like how his mullet is, you know, they say a mullet is a party in front, and a, or no, business in front, party in the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His is very much like... Like, a, you know, if you go to a Republican Party, it's like, <laughs> that would be it's still very reserved. He's wearing suits. <laughs> it's know, business in the front, run. Republican Party. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. GOP in the back. Okay. <laughs> GOP in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Am I going? Sure. Okay. I mean, do we need, first of all, I want to say, I think that that's fake. I, there's there's you literally spend, you one picture. You Photoshop? Why would you Photoshop well, There's that? only one picture. It's I true. need to see more pictures. We do need more. Okay. All right. So He's not uh, wearing a mask. See, that's what makes that's how you mad. know it's fake. Mm. Um, it's okay. Here's the headline: It's freezing cold in Texas. The Weather Channel tweeted on January 21st that February would be unseasonably warm. <laughs> unseasonably. 
Yeah. Uh, so they failed. Wrong they, a little bit. They were wrong. They were off by about 50 degrees, I think. <laughs> <laughs> For people that are listening to this uh, later on when they don't know what's going on right now, it's like the whole United States is frozen except for Florida. Exactly. And yes. California. And California. Yeah. But it's cold here. I'm cold right now. It's like in the mid-60s. It's cold <laughs> for us. <laughs> well, right now. Yeah, yeah. But like at night, I have to wear like a bunch of layers. It hits the 40s. Yeah, I get really cold at night. Because yeah, my man cave has no, it's all open windows and everything to, for the cigar smoke. Uh, and very thin walls. That's kind of on you, though. That's on me. <laughs> I choose. I choose to go out there, but uh, you've chosen your lifestyle. I have. So. Yeah, I made my bed. Now lifestyle I will drink preference. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tick quote. <laughs> uh, uh, is it my turn? Yeah. I was gonna be a mashed potato. Florida boy recounts garbage truck horror. So Wes found this one. A, a child climbed into a garbage truck. Yeah, I didn't put enough information in here for yeah. you to read, but he. This. <laughs> He's new. <laughs> it's a hobo. This is his first and last day working for the I Babylon just put Bay. the quote in that I love, but this, this I guess I oh, would wow. say dumb kid mm. crawled into the garbage truck because he loved garbage trucks. He was seven. Maybe so. they don't know it smashes it. I don't think he knew that part. Yeah. And this, this truck had like blades that crushed up Ooh. and shredded the thing. And then the truck driver heard some kid crying and he just started scrambling to run back to he was in the front of the truck mm -hmm. and he scrambled and ran around the back to turn off the blades and he turned them off like the second before this kid got pulled in he actually oh, got cut man. the kid got cut and the kid says uh quote i don't like trash cans anymore <laughs> <laughs> and then he says unless it's like a tiny trash can that's inside the house then it might be fine <laughs> Oh, his obsession witness. with trash is not over. Yeah, I used to talk about Calvin's obsession with garbage trucks. You'd get up. If you, yeah, when we heard it. the noise, All you'd right. run out and watch it like it was a passing brontosaurus or something. <laughs> yeah. like, like that scene from Jurassic Park when they all look up and see the dinosaurs for the first right. time. <laughs> that was every Monday morning, Tuesday morning. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. At our house. But he never got in. He never got in, yeah. Okay. Go, that's because we put a lock on the gate. He probably would have. Excellent. It sounds like something he would absolutely do. Good kid can never watch Toy Story 3 again. Yeah. Uh, is it my turn? I think it is. Actor Sean Penn suggests mm. the Pope should impeach evangelical <laughs> okay. Christian okay. leaders. <laughs> okay. This doesn't quite sell it. You've got to read. <laughs> just got to read his tweet. You have to read Sean Penn's tweet. Yeah, yeah the tweet. Uh, I just clicked on. Oh, sorry. We, we moved the tweet to the wrong part of the article. Okay, here it's it on here, right here. Sean Penn. Evangelical leaders should themselves be impeached by the Vatican. Yeah. If they themselves don't follow Nikki Haley's lead and clearly state they should not have followed... Satin, Satin into the bowels of hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but perhaps they're too busy at sex parties. <laughs> <laughs> so was he oh, tired great. when he wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> so much to unpack here, like the oh impeaching of evangelicals by the Vatican. Well, and apparently hell is filled with satin. <laughs> satin. <laughs> Which sounds you have nice. to follow satin into hell. <laughs> so, so, that's amazing. <laughs> I don't understand. Don't follow Nikki. Okay, so Nikki Haley must have said something. She said we shouldn't have followed Trump. Okay. Some, something along those lines. So he lines. says, unless you stand up like Nikki Haley and say, mm -hmm. I say no to Satin. Mm -hmm. Not today, Satin. Mm -hmm. Get thee behind me, Satin. Get thee behind me, Satin. Yeah. <laughs> then you should be impeached. Impeached yeah. by the Vatican. <laughs> impeached by the Vatican. <laughs> What's the we process about, for that? I we <laughs> <laughs> were talking about it reminds us of how... Hollywood writes Christians like they just mix up all these things. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, right. They just have vaguely heard Christian ch or church words, you know. <laughs> right. It made me like, think oh, of the, the priest movie. of the priest of the Calvary Chapel or something. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly right. <laughs> made me think of the movie Saved, where it's supposed yes. to be this evangelical yes. thing, and there's just all this Catholicism mixed in. Yeah, and they don't really know. They like, clearly have never been within a hundred feet of a church no. in their lives, no. and yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So these e leaders are like, well, we would have stood up like Nikki Haley, but I got the sex party to go yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> sex party. Oh, it starts at really four. Schedule. I don't really have the time. I think the Vatican's busy. I don't think they'll. I think they'll overlook this one. <laughs> yeah. Can they impeach even their own people? Can they, is impeaching a thing that Vatican's do? Uh, no. no. Vatican's. No. <laughs> <laughs> now you're doing you're doing what Hollywood I'm does. I'm trying to play Sean Penn. Sure, sure, here. sure. <laughs> Vaticanese. You hear from Vatican Vaticanites. Vaticanite. <laughs> Catholics. I liked Ali Beth Stuckey's response. I don't know if anyone's given you a clear explanation of what you got wrong here, but the Pope is Catholic and evangelicals are not, so he has no authority over what they do. That's one. Two, they can't be impeached. And three, it's velvet. Velvet is in hell. Not satin. <laughs> is velvet really in hell? 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Did she just not like velvet? I think she was that just a making a play on the word sad. I was joke. trying to figure out there's a, a scripture joke. somewhere about the velvet of hell or something. Yeah. <laughs> the velvety. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that exists. It's okay. supposed to be a joke. But she's a woman, yeah. so. Yeah, you know, they, they struggle <laughs> sometimes. Um, <clears throat> Uh, who wants to get uh, the bear one? Oh, they, Kyle, right. you should read this one. No. No. This one's for you, Kyle. No! 20-foot, <laughs> two-inch bear made from roses breaks Guinness world record. Oh, I love Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, decoration at a wedding vow renewal ceremony for 108 couples in China broke a Guinness world record for the world's what? largest rose bear. Mm. Wait, a ceremony for 108 couples? Oh, a uh, Renewal, sir. So they weren't Renewal. all getting married on the same day. It wasn't like the Moonies. Yeah, it wasn't the Moonies. So is there a lot of competition for giant rose bears? Is this a common thing? Yeah, how many are there out there and what are their This animals? might be the only one. I mean, yeah. so this is a pretty dubious. Once again, well, I have specific. A, I have a rose bear that's a little bit smaller than this, but yeah, it was the 20, old record. It's 20 foot, not 20 foot two. Yeah, exactly. With the extra two inches. Yeah. Yeah. I have a massive hyacinth bear. Oh, well, that might, you might have is a record. Is that a flower? <laughs> <I think laughs> sure. So. Sounds like one. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> All, All right, right. Well, that's it for that's weird it. news. That's the weird oh, news. That was some weird news, guys. That was weird. So, Wikipedia. <laughs> More like Wokepedia, am oh, I right? Man. Oh, oh dang. Dang. How did you do that? Oh, All right. Jeez, you're fast. I think I have a thing just for that. No. <laughs> no. Is that. No? <laughs> you find this guy. <laughs> okay. So, Wikipedia, uh, you can go in and you can look at the editors having discussions behind the scenes about uh, what, they're, what edits they're going to make to your page and, you know, or, or any entry on the page. <laughs> and so, we found, uh, our CEO, Seth Dillon, found on our page, our Babylon B Wikipedia entry, mm-hmm. people discussing whether or not we should be defined as satire because they don't <laughs> like our jokes. <laughs> And it's fantastic. So we're going to re- do a dramatic reading of dramatic this reading. conversation between these Wikipedia editors. So okay. here we go. Isn't satire... Wait, hold on. Here's the headline. Or the, the topic, whatever. Can this legally be considered satire? <laughs> Isn't satire supposed to be humorous in some way? Or at the very least, have some sort of coherent comedic structure to it? I've read many B articles, and they largely seem constitutionally unable to craft anything even resembling a joke or satirical barb. <laughs> open to others' thoughts on this. <laughs> yeah. This I'm feels sure, like an I'm open-minded sure open. person. I'm sure you're open to that. For sure. Yes. Uh, Wikipedia reflects what is published in reliable sources, and those sources generally describe the B as a satire site. Hmm. Hmm. You can be, uh, you can be the, oh, next my, okay. the next guy. Yeah. I uh, agreed with Guerrilla Warfare, which is his name, username. That's, that's the Kyle. previous guy. Kyle no, that, plays Guerrilla Warfare. No, that's no, you. That you're that's Guerrilla me. Warfare. I'm Guerrilla Warfare. You're this guy. I mean, I, I'm an uh, anonymous. This is an anonymous. Yeah, a bunch of numbers. Person. I see. This is about what reputable sources say, not an individual editor's sense of humor. Squatch 347. <laughs> Squatch. <laughs> you know, it's most unfortunate, though, because in reality, the Babylon Bee is no different from any other right-wing disinfo site. Mm. Fox, OAN, Newsweek. Exactly the same. Bounding into comics, you name it. They're everybody all the knows, same. Everyone knows bounding into comics. Yeah, sure. The Bee simply found a way to protect themselves from liability by adding LOLJK at the end of every article, which is perfectly in line with the usual tactics of the Trump era. Mm. Yeah. Every they time they are caught lying, that. they simply say it was just a joke the whole time. Mm. But as long as they avoid being fact-checked, Republicans eat this nonsense up like it was candy. I'm pretty sure Snopes did release an article defending their decision to fact-check the bee. They even had statistics showing that over 40% of Republicans can't tell the difference between Babylon Bee satire and actual <laughs> news stories. To call the site satire Whoa. is like calling the anti-abortion movement pro-life. <laughs> Wait a minute. But aren't they called pro? So, they are pro, called pro. <laughs> so Wait then, you're good. You should be fine then. So right? we, according to this guy, it's just a comedic choice that we make to add LOLJK at the end of every article. Yeah, it's it's what makes it funny. It's funny. AOC is an idiot. Yeah. Otherwise, how L-O-L-J-K. would people know LOLJK? It was a joke. How would yeah. they put? Yeah. There's no way to communicate that without adding the LOLJK. And that study, remember that study. 40% of Republicans can't tell the difference. And the way they ran this study was they took no, was our bizarre. headlines, they reworded them to make it sound like a real news story. like Because, you know, just, there's a format to the headline where the joke reveals yeah. itself. Right. They completely moved, take that out and then had people just, they read that and said, do you think that's a joke or not? Yeah, right? so so it's like our Carmen it's passes bizarre. away after lifelong addiction to Jesus. Yeah, right. It's like if they took that and they said, did Carmen 
die after struggling with an addiction to Jesus for 30 years. Oh, even if they probably take out Jesus, they did die. Did Carbon die Did of an addiction? After a, right. an addiction? Yeah. And the people would be like, yeah, I, wow, that I, sounds I, real. Yeah. If the sure. bee said it, mm -hmm. then yeah. Yeah, it's on the internet. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Why are you asking me this? Wow. So thanks a lot, um, Wikipedia editors. We're set. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are working hard on keeping Wikipedia, you know, reputable and trustworthy. And making sure people are safe from jokes. Safe from uh, maybe jokes. Maybe I'm totally an uh, ignorant person. Just hold your comment on that. But um, right. there's a comment section in Wikipedia where people can it's just... It's like, uh, they, they call it the talk page. It's behind oh. the article. So you can say, hey, this doesn't sound quite right. And then editors will come along and reply. And I see. Yeah, I've never bothered to look at any of that. Yeah. You can do it on any page. There's like, a, I think it's like a talk tab or something. You click mm. on it. You can look at what people are... It's kind of interesting. Sure. Yeah. But uh, it's kind of scary when you look at it that way. Because they're clearly trying to get us labeled in this like pigeonhole of like right. disinfo. Right. I think the... The gist of this is you can't make jokes if you're a conservative. That's that's the idea. Yeah, I think that's probably I, I where it's going to. Yeah. Yeah. Which it's probably true, yeah. right? Is that well we have our pronoun joke and mm -hmm. then we have our like identifies joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the two jokes. That's all we got so far. I, I, I like okay. we met, we didn't get to the end here, this guy who's an a Wikipedia article editor. Uh, -huh. uh one of the last things he says about that Snope study. I don't remember the specifics, and I'm not very good at looking this stuff up. <laughs> the Snopes not counted as a secondary source. So you're editing Wikipedia pages, and you're not very good at looking stuff up. Right. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Right. Now, to be fair, that's this random anonymous internet user who came along starting mm -hmm. to suggest this stuff. Right. So this doesn't seem like someone who regularly edits Wikipedia. This is someone who's come along and said, oh, you're just re looking up the right. Babylon Bee. Oh, mm. Babylon Bee is described as humor. Mm -hmm. I, will I will not, not stand for it. Right. So this isn't actually <laughs> Wikipedia. We own. Yeah. It's people. It's people. Right. It's some dumb dummy. Dumb. It's just some dummy. <laughs> which, which is all of Wikipedia, really. Yeah. It's a lot of dummies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's good people on Wikipedia, I'm sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. All right. You ready? Topic of, topic the, week. of the week. And now, the Babylon Bee's Topic of the Week. All right. So... Last week was a little crazy for us here at the Babylon Bee. Uh, Wednesday, we were the place was all a buzz because e puns. Uh, <laughs> Gina Carano was set to come in and interview mm. in person the next day, Thursday. We yeah. had a we had a, a skit that we had written, and we mm. were hoping to get her on a little cameo on there. It was a crazy day, right? Yep. So then we all it's like the late in the day we're like, oh, it's gonna be crazy, and then we're all getting dinner. Patrick's e quickly editing this video so that it's ready so that we just need to add the one scene with her at the end. And then we see Twitter pops up. Gina Carano has been fired. Mm -hmm. You seem too traumatized to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like yeah, a roller coaster. So it was a it was roller, total it was, roller coaster. It was insane. Um, and she had actually tweeted the day before she was supposed to come on our podcast. Yeah, her last tweet after she got canceled. Heading over to the Babylon Bee podcast. Yeah. And tagged us in it. So, so we were getting asked by these news outlets and stuff like, what, did you get She's the like interview? the top trending topic on Twitter and everybody yeah, yeah. who goes to her page sees like, yeah. on the Babylon Bee podcast. Yeah. yeah. So we had to settle for Wes is what we're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, so we had Wes instead. Yeah. So, I think yeah. you guys made the right choice, though, to cancel her and yeah. say, like, we don't want to interview yeah. someone yeah. that toxic and that. Yeah, yeah. someone yeah. who would dare really to say that choice. we don't want to turn our neighbors over to Nazis. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to become Disgusting. Nazis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty. And and the pronouns being beep, bop, boop or whatever. That's, that's the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can't associate. Yeah. Well, the crazy thing is she yeah. did tell us, like, she messaged us that she was still doing it. Mm. So we're like, she's still doing it. So the, the, uh, the roller coaster's like, up, 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 down, and down, still doing it. Uh, uh, and then she couldn't do it, which is totally understandable. The moment she said she's still doing it in the back of my head, I'm like, that's There's like no a 50% way. chance. Yeah, sure. Because yeah. it's like a storm. Like, I've been minorly attacked on Twitter where, like, you know, my phone's just going off all day because mm -hmm. they've decided I'm bad. Mm -hmm. And... You know, it's probably a teeny tiny version of whatever she's going through, but people are contacting you. All of a sudden, people that, you know, Twitter follows the people that you know from Hollywood, something like, what? You're bad? And like, they're unfollowing <laughs> you and stuff's happening. And, and uh, the pressure, she's probably getting all this pressure to release a statement renouncing her faith or whatever. <laughs> Drink faith. the blood of a goat. You know, <laughs> whatever they make you do in Hollywood. I and, assume uh, something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. 
And, Confirm uh, or deny the, the goat drinking, the goat blood drinking. Uh, there's a little bit of goat, a little bit of that blood drinking. Kind of like the Masons. We talked about that with Kellen Erskine. Yeah. Oh, yes. do they drink Remember the goat blood too? Drink blood and deny Jesus yeah. or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rumor. That's just a rumor. <laughs> so, yeah, but then cool it, it thing probably happened. turned out for the best because if she had come in before she got fired we would have this interview with her where she's still on star Wars. yeah that would have yeah. been weird and then if she had come in the day after she would have been all depressed mm-hmm. yeah or she would have said and we couldn't been angry and said a lot of things maybe she did right you know, or we'd be like like so what's it like being on star wars and she'd be like <laughs> <laughs> you know so that doesn't yeah These are that jerks. Doesn't work. and the great news was that day she got a uh, film deal with daily wire mm-hmm. yeah so, so which i think is exciting i That's do cool. think it's exciting too because I love that answer back that like, okay, fine. You're a canceler. Yeah. We'll make a movie with her. That they used to feel like not an option. If, if things are changing. Yeah. And that's kind of what we want to talk about here. Mm-hmm. Wes is in the film industry. He makes movies and stuff. Uh, we make entertainment. We're trying to get some movies made. And, uh, and there's the shift. You know, we talked about Dallas Sonier did that interview with Ben Shapiro and there. Uh, he's that producer mm-hmm. uh, who's going to produce a movie with Gina Carano. They announced and uh, making the shift where it's like, and it's not, I think that one thing that excites me about people that are more conservative making movies is we don't feel like we have to make ideological movies. And, I, and in fact, I would love it if we didn't feel like we had to. Mm-hmm. It feels like, it's, it's weird right now because it feels like the left owns the space where it's like, we just make movies. And then if you're conservative, it's like, then it's just a, has to be labeled Christian or conservative movie. Mm-hmm. I'd love to shift things over so that, because it really is true. I mean, I, I, the more honest thing that's going on is the left makes leftist movies, right? <laughs> but right. it doesn't get labeled that way. And I would love to be able to evolve into this place where conservatives can be conservatives, whether or not they're making conservative or Christian movie, they're just making good entertainment. And I feel like we want to get to that place where movies don't have to be pushing some ideology of some kind. It's approved. I, I feel like you just have to, say things that are true like you right. have to make movies about things that are true right and uh i, I feel like uh, any movie I, I mean honestly i feel like a lot of the problem with christian movies in the past has been that the the ideology and the message trumped saying things that are true mm-hmm. and so people have these conversions in the films that are not the way people actually come to jesus and they they uh, people that are against Christianity say things that people that are against Christianity don't actually say, or they're they're angrier, or that you know they don't act like humans. And so, um, but you know, Christians sort of mock Christian movies because of that. But but like you're saying, like every little subculture has their movies where their agenda is so strong. There's so many movies that are that come out that are uh, the message about environmental causes is so strong. That it's just detached from reality and it's it's unwatchable, you know. Right. Or there's like uh, LGBT movies that the agenda is so strong that like people that hate LGBT people don't in the movie don't act like real humans and don't mm-hmm. have real human interaction. And so uh, I hope that like the Daily Wire and people that are sort of in that conservative space, I hope we can like make movies where we just say things that are true and like right. that message will emerge you don't have to hammer it in mm-hmm. you don't have to force it in you know so i hope we can get there i think we're going that direction for sure there really seems to be some kind of shaking up that's going on yeah i mean indie films are on the rise and uh it's just it's shifted to where because of streaming independent films a lot of hollywood has moved out to georgia you know mm-hmm. it's just a uh, between COVID wrecking theaters and uh, streaming, yeah. changing the the landscape. I mean, smaller niche films do way better now than they used to. Right. And big budget films, <clears throat> because of the model that they're set on, is that you have to get all these butts and seat in theater seats and these expensive right. theaters, which are going up in price. And now they're becoming premium, where it's like you get a steak and need a movie, you know, watch a movie, right. and sit there and get drink wine or whatever. Right. Uh, you know, have, they have to be movies that will absolutely make billions of dollars. Otherwise, they're screwed. It has to be Marvel and it has to be remakes. And right. They're not taking risks anymore. No, that's true. And and also streaming, but there's like eight gazillion yeah. streaming channels and they're all desperate for content. Yeah. So there's definitely like a, a huge market there, and especially after this year of COVID. Nothing's getting made. Mm-hmm. So everyone is home watching everything that's available and we're out. We're out, we're out of stuff. And so. all it will take is a few great movies made yeah. by conservatives. 
yeah. to shift things massively. Because I think there's a lot of people, I think, in Hollywood that they, that they go, you know, yeah, my movie's not like environmentalist tr- you know, trope. It's just a great movie. True story. It's true to what I think is true, you know. Right. Uh, or it's a great action movie or whatever. Right. Or you'll make it, you know. I guess it doesn't help my career to, like, hate Republicans now or whatever. Right. <laughs> the right. conservatives yeah. are to have some message. <laughs> right. Just to have that shift of, like, oh, wait, great movies can be made over here that are successful with financial successes. Like, that's going to take a lot of power away from Hollywood. Yeah, I think so. Uh, have you guys heard of that movie, uh, Church People? It's oh, coming yeah, out. It's, I think it kind of fits into that space really well. <laughs> okay. that you're talking about. Never heard of it. Oh, it's going to be huge. Oh, okay. it's going to be huge. Yeah. Tens of people Sounds will weird. see it. <laughs> <laughs> Dozens. Dozens of us. <laughs> yeah. I think that there's been this this narrative that we've kind of bought into that conservatives are really bad at entertainment. Yeah, right. Conservatives are bad at comedy. I mean, that's something we hear all the time, obviously. Right. For good reason. I mean, we were on the bad one. Beat. See. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> LOL, JK. Yeah. But the, <laughs> but the weird thing is, I think one of the factors is that we, conservative entertainment is, is often explicitly labeled. Like mm-hmm, this is a right. conservative movie, mm-hmm. you know, conservative movie or whatever. And so when you see a bad conservative movie, you go, ah, oh, conservatives are terrible at this. Right, right. But you see a bad movie like frozen two you know and you're like that's not seen as a bad liberal movie right right you know? it, it's very on the nose very preachy you know it's in your face right but you but that's not that failure is i mean it's a i say failure it makes billions of dollars right right you know but that kind of artistic failure in my view you know isn't isn't really labeled isn't really pinned on liberals it's just mm-hmm. seen as you know whatever right I, I think the the margin for error is much smaller for conservatives, for sure. Uh, be, part of it is that the slice of the pie has been. I, I wouldn't even say conservatives. I'd say like the Christian market. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. same. And yeah. There's been a lot of pressure from the Christian market to say like, well, that doesn't check the boxes for what a Christian right. movie is. There's not a massive conversion. Yeah, where they where's drop the to their knees and the, the rain end. falls and yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. They they don't go to the church for the first time in fifty years and <laughs> repent. <laughs> And so um, some of that's come from Christians, but also, honestly, I've been on the side where the major studios have been saying like, well, we'll distribute your Christian film, but it has to check these boxes because we know that's what Christians want. That's what sells, yeah. And they're the ones sort of (laughs) forcing. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, it's a Hollywood isn't completely, you know, the Christian culture is definitely guilty in this arena just as much, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think we've grown beyond that quite a bit uh i think that's kind of a become a thing of the past and i mean that's the thing every christian i know watches all most you know most of them have seen breaking bad or they've seen all these shows and right you know it's like why do we compartmentalize in that way and like let hollywood make all these great stories then we have always have to tell the same story yeah that's i think people are kind of waking up to that doesn't have to be the case yeah when you ask i've actually met with investors about making films that are sort of you know, from a good moral standpoint, but not necessarily Christian films, but, and, and then, you, you know, they, they'll kind of say like, well, we want to invest in Christian films. And then you ask them what their favorite movies are and they'll say yeah. up and, uh, yeah. you know, all of the Pixar movies and none of them are Christian films. None of them. And they're all, you know, movies that have good family values and like support good things and, and, um, are about forgiveness and, and mm-hmm. redemption. Uh, but then, well, but we're going to make a Christian film. Yeah. Just make a good film that has all of those things that you want in it, you know. Yeah, tell good stories. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, the – I'm kind of getting back to something we were talking about earlier, but the uh, – you know, I, I think that there's a certain value that conservatives have or at least a, a worldview where for us we go the truth about the world is and we it's our faith is that. Right. Our politics are a separate thing where it's more of a hypothetical, like, we think this might work. Mm-hmm. For the, I think for people on the left, the truth about the world mm-hmm. and the politics are one thing. So mm-hmm. they have a much harder time labeling things right. as political because to them there's no distinction. And right. so that, that creates its own weird issue where they feel like anything that isn't following that political line is a lie. Right, right. And, uh, and then also that they're... For us, the truth about the the world is eternal, and it's beyond this world. There's God, there's angels, there's demons, there's things beyond this world. For them, it's all right here in this world. So all their gods, their angels, their demons are right here. And so they have a much harder time allowing their demons, right, who are real people, 
right right uh to also make movies and <laughs> no i i think you're absolutely so there's right. just this divide that like i don't know how you the only way to overcome it is to make successful movies i yeah. think so that you know because money is powerful <laughs> so right the sure. movie does well people are going to come over there and make the movies there yeah yeah i think you're right uh i think it'll happen too though that uh Christians and or conservatives. I, I don't want to say those are the same thing, yeah, but uh, yeah, they are. I mean, but they're the, I mean, they're just, just, just be honest. real here. <laughs> LOL, well, JK. Um, but they, uh, I think it'll happen where a movie will have sort of a more conservative worldview and it'll do well. And then people on the left will go like, oh, it's propaganda. It's They're That's sneaking garbage. it in. It's, yeah. it's, uh, the Trojan horse. They're trying yeah. to get your message in there. And, and yeah, that was really bizarre with Hillbilly Elegy. Right. I and mean, it was like, it's a well done, good movie. Right. Well, the but book the, is incredible. I didn't read it, but oh, uh, yeah, my. it's really good. But just the, the criticism that like, it's white, poor white people don't need their story told. Just so right. weird. Why? Right. <laughs> we can't, can't. Anyway. No, that's and the book. The criticism, criticism on the book was the same that, it, which is funny. Cause you kind of, talks about that a little bit like yeah. uh you know there are people that are uh life is really hard and they don't have anything and they're struggling and then when they talk about it people will say well try being black and being in that situation and mm -hmm. like, oh okay <laughs> i I'm, I'm not i guess i don't know it's not like well, they're not mutually exclusive right exactly right it's yeah, just it's, like we have like, to have this narrative that white people are all this all this privilege and we can't we can't talk outside any that's once again just have, can we just talk about what is true? Right, exactly, right. I mean, that's the weird thing for me being, I mean, I just, I grew up in a very poor white area in Oregon. Yeah. And so all of the tropes about white people and everything, like, they don't apply to where I grew up. <laughs> but I, <laughs> Same with me. I, again, like, my dad worked in a factory and my mom cleaned houses for a living. And so a lot of the... But white, probably nice houses, to be Yeah, afraid. she cleaned really nice houses. <laughs> yeah. It's that's a pretty white privilege. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of that doesn't resonate. I, I don't understand. It doesn't I don't take know away from the experience of other people of other races. It's, right. Why can't those people have... To me, stories are about... that's And that's what I hate about all the like, forced diversity mm -hmm. in stories, is that most great stories are from these little pockets of Subculture. people. Subcultures. Yeah, right. And if you have to involve and get every single culture into one story, you, it makes it this bland it sort it not of... True. It looks like a stock photo where everybody's around right. the table shaking hands <laughs> and they're all different races. It's a Benetton it's, ad. It's just not reality. <laughs> and it's not that it's racist. These people... You know, it's not racist because most right. of your friends are from your same subculture. Right. But that's where great stories happen. Yeah, I think that's true. I think a lot about um, uh, in when... Oh, see, I'm going to get this all messed up. The, in the Bible, there was the guy who was Jesus, Jesus healed him. Oh, sorry. Uh, of, <laughs> <not> the, <laughs> Jesus healed him of blindness, and then he said, "Go to the temple." And and uh, was it the spit mud guy? Yeah, yeah. And so he goes, and they're all freaking out and yelling at him, and like, "What happened? What are you doing? What was it from God or was it from the devil?" And his answer was, "All I know is I used to be blind, and now I'm not." Hmm. And I, I love that, that like, we should just tell stories where we just, we just give the facts. Mm -hmm. Like, here are the facts. I used to be blind and now I'm not. Yeah. And you guys can argue about it and wrestle and figure it out. But all I know is I was blind and Jesus healed me and here I am. You know, right. that's, that's yeah. all we have to do. And that's what we do with our own life stories. Right. Our life stories don't tell us what to believe. We go through an experience and at the end we draw our own beliefs from it. Right. And often with those beliefs we go, maybe. You know, right. We're right. trying to figure it out. Makes sense to That's me. That's a good story. It should be like it gives you a series of events that draw you to think to ask a question. Right. But when the when it beats you over the head with what you need to believe based right. on that story, then it's it's propaganda. propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. We need to write the conservative version of Fern Gully. <laughs> <laughs> Where the heroes go and destroy the forest. Yeah. Like, maybe. Sure. Okay. I'm yeah. just throwing that out like there. That. I don't know. Let me, let me write that down. <laughs> yeah. So this is a free idea. But they create a whole bunch of jobs? <laughs> yeah. But a lot of jobs. Yeah. They're just crushing the fairies and stomping mm -hmm. on them. Oh, man. I would love that. Movie. But they plant a bunch more trees in the end because... Because of sustainability. They need money. Profitability. Mm -hmm. I mean... Profitability. Yeah. Thank you, capitalism. All right. Well... Glorious profit. Maybe we can talk a little bit more on this in the subscriber portion if we get some mm. time. Let's move on to hate mail, yeah? Oh, sounds good. I really miss Adam Ford. All right, we got a hate mail from a fan named Denise, and uh, Wes is going to read it for us in a <laughs> dramatic voice. 
You do it in your Minnesota accent or something. I am so saddened to see your post uh, see you post mistruths and have a misleading agenda. All for what? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Certainly not to promote our Heavenly Father. When you lay your head down at night, think about what you stand for. That was the perfect voice. Did you, read, did you pre-read this at all? I mean, that I don't was the even perfect... Know, I don't even know how to read. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, Whoa, it's a miracle. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that was beautiful. Thank I you. do feel bad for this lady thinks that, we, that we're that bad. You she sounds down, like a sweet lady. You lay your head down at night, young man. What about what you stand for? <laughs> you think about yeah, what you've you think done. about that. When you stand... I just feel like there's something there where you're laying down but thinking about standing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't get a good joke out of it. <laughs> well... It should be how do you sleep at night or something, right? Yeah. Know. Well, this is a more elk. That was draft one. That. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> she didn't do a rewrite on that one. <laughs> what, do you guys uh, email people back when they send things like this? Or <laughs> Once in a while, our yeah. CEO, our CEO will, will, answer will just back blast the back, best. and then they'll blast, <laughs> and then we'll get like a thread of like 20 messages, and it's great. Yeah. <laughs> it is great. <laughs> Did we ever read? I thought we had one that we read back and forth. I think so. I can't remember. I think there's a new one where he was going like, nah, uh, and they're like, uh huh. Yeah. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to read that one. <laughs> like, Don't you have like 50 employees or something? Dan, doing? make a note. Make a note, Dan. We got to find that. We got to find that email because it was hilarious. All right. I, I, do you know what she got upset about? No, I don't. Just, I'm going to tell us what the story was. Yeah. Because we posted mistruths. It's always and, people and thinking that we're trying to yeah. mislead people. Yeah. So. She didn't read all the way to the end where it said LOL JK. She <laughs> yeah, just, yeah that she missed that LOL JK. Okay. So she thought it was OAN or comics on, what was that? Bounding Com- into comics. Bounding into comics. That's it. That? She probably reads that a lot. No idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Nazi comic, I assume. Sure. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us, everybody. We're going to move to the subscriber portion where we're going to watch some Carmen videos and jam out to them. Yeah. Maybe talk some more about little- Christian art and conservative art. And we have a voicemail from a subscriber, and we've got a bonus hate mail for you. And plus, we're going to read some subscriber-submitted headlines. And Wes will tell some crazy stories. Wes is going to tell us behind-the-scenes <laughs> stories, all the dirt on Carmen. And Bald- <laughs> the Baldwins. And May he rest. Joey Fatone. Yeah. yeah. I got I got dirt. Oh. <laughs> all right. We got dirt. And Kirk, Kirk Cameron? Okay. Just make something up. All yeah, right. I'll make something up. All right. We'll see you guys. Coming up next for Babylon B subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were a Christian based news source, but I see you backing AOC in her lies. I'm always embarrassed to order his coffee order because it's a tall glass of coffee, red eye, which is like coffee with espresso in it. Right. And then 10 pumps of mint. Gross. <laughs> no like no cream, no sugar. Calvinist Arminian. Oh, gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Wondering what they'll say next? The rest of this podcast is in our super exclusive premium subscriber lounge. Go to BabylonB.com slash plans for full length ad free podcasts. Kyle and Ethan would like to thank Seth Dillon for paying the bills. Adam Ford for creating their job. The other writers for tirelessly pitching headlines, the subscribers and you, the listener. Until next time, this is Dave D'Andrea, the voice of the Babylon Bee, 